we're promoting a Vince McMahon interview. It's a sit down interview this time. It's not gold dust and it's not Mick Foley. It's you and Vince McMahon. And it's the infamous why Brett, why, and it's even marketed as the untold story. And you're given the task of, of, of hosting this interview with Vince. Were you giving the questions? Like, t- tell us how that all comes to be. Do they say, all right, you say this, then I'll say that. Or yeah, well, Vince is not, Vince doesn't work that way real well. And I don't either at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a list of questions that I was provided to put into the context of this interview. And, uh, I, I, I don't know, man, it's just, uh, those are harder to remember. Uh, but it was, hard, it was heavily produced and, you know, Vince wanted to make sure that every word was tangible. Every word was, uh, exactly what he wanted to say, uh, cause he had points he wanted to make and he was trying to save face, I think in, in a large extent. Uh, so, but we, we had a, it was a, it was a decent interview. I don't remember all the highs and lows of it, uh, other than it was, you know, something Vince wanted to do. He was very hell bent on it. And, uh, you know, he could, I, I, for all I could care, he could use Michael Cole in that interview. Michael Cole's a great interviewer still is. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, man. I, I, it came and went, Vince got off his chest. He addressed the matter and off we went to, to try to jumpstart this, this, uh, train wreck. Well, let's talk about the, the thing that everybody remembers most of all from that interview, the phrase Brett screwed Brett. Yeah. Did, I mean, did you know going into that, that will be the takeaway or was it just organic and it just happened? No, it was organic. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't have Vince's lines. Right. I didn't have, okay, you say this, I'll say that. Cause neither one of us are comfortable in that deal. And plus it would have sounded so contrived Yes. and so, uh, fake phony and Vince did not want that. He wanted it to be it, from his perspective, uh, his side of the story. So I, uh, I, I remember it very well. I was nervous. It was, uh, cause I was in uncharted waters. I was in the, I was in the deep end of the pool and not, and I'm not a great swimmer but we made it through it. And, and, uh, so I guess that's part of my legacy is that that interview was one of the more significant pieces of creative business uh, that I had done. Did you think that the, the Brett screwed Brett thing was going to be as big as it was when you no. were finished? Okay. Uh, uh-uh, I didn't, it caught on. Yeah. It add fuel to the fire, if you will. So, uh, but again, it, the story just kept continuing. It's like, you want to say, for the love of God, can we just get past this shit? Right. Can we, can we finally somewhere move on? Are we selling tickets? Are we doing anything, you know, great creative? Uh, I don't, it didn't seem like it. It seemed like we, it's like, it's like, it's a difference in throwing a, a gallon of fuel on the fire or a, just a little bit. We poured a lot of, a lot on the fire. And I don't know that, it, I don't know that that interview really helped Vince's side of the story or not. That's an individual, individual p- opinion. But I, I thought that, uh, I don't know how much, like I said, I don't know how much good Vince did for himself, uh, by doing the interview and especially coming up with that, uh, go home line, uh, or most, most memorable line, of Brett screwed Brett. Well, let's talk about. You know, what we're seeing as we see a shot here, maybe you're watching with us on YouTube. Gosh, I hope you are. If you haven't already recommend to a friend that they go check it out. It's grilling Jr on youtube.com. That's grilling Jr on youtube.com. You can also watch live on ad free shows. Uh, we got it sold out hanging from the rafters in the chat right now, folks watching us do this program live. But as we're taking a look at the heel, Mr. McMahon. Of course, that's still Vince McMahon, but this interview, a lot of people point to and say, that is the beginning of the Mr. McMahon character. And we know that he's going to become the hottest heel in the whole promotion Oh yeah, and, and the stuff he's going to make the music he's going to make with, uh, with Steve Austin, just one month later, starting with the whole DX thing and, and Mike Tyson thing. And then on through the year, I mean, it'll, that will eventually be the feud that puts WWE in the driver's seat of the Monday night wars. 
after right. getting thumped week after week after week. 83 but weeks, we Conrad. 83 weeks. 83 weeks is on adfreakshows.com. There you go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Would you, shove, you shove it right up my ass, will you? One more no. time, I will. Um, <laughs> talk to me about you're sitting there across from him on camera. This is the birth of Mr. McMahon. Would you, could you imagine that this is in your mind's eye, this is Vince transitioning from being quote unquote, just an announcer to now he's the lead villain. Uh, well, I wasn't, I wasn't planning on it, I, I, but it worked. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, look, what you said earlier is accurate. I said it many times to myself, uh, Miss McMahon, Mr. McMahon, more specifically was the top heel in the attitude era. Yes. And that's not knocking triple H or, or any other heels. No, not at all. It was the fact that Vince was, it was a fresh character. It was new. It was material that we had not seen or heard, uh, from, uh, of, uh, until to that date. So it, it had all the elements necessary. We checked all the boxes and, uh, you know, the, the, I was never, I was never. I, didn't, I was surprised that Vince was such a good heel, uh, and he was. He was the best, and uh, and and Vince McMahon helped make Steve Austin in this rivalry and this, uh, this this thing. So, uh, at the end of the day, it was a win for WWE because McMahon's uh, the height of his his scenario, his uh, this whole thing was was extraordinary. We couldn't have created a better, a bigger or better heel. Now we no. wanted to make more heels and we tried to make more heels and we did, but nothing compared to Vince. And I, and I also will say that, uh, you know, without leaving out Stephanie, uh, she contributed to that, uh, persona, uh, very well. I mean, she is, if Vince was the number one heel as time went on, uh, Stephanie and triple H or, or maybe that one a and one B type thing. But it was a family deal. It was a family situation. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we got past it. And what it did was it helped make a lot of other people. You know, Vince's rub, you can go back and look, uh, it was just uh, astonishing of how many talents it touched. And that's smart booking. Vince made sure that the right people got the right rub uh, to make this thing work and to create a new perspective, a new of personas and new rubs. As I said, the rubs are very much un, undervalued sometimes. And Vince have shared his rub very, very prominently, uh, with the wannabe heel superstars. It's amazing to me that I don't even know this was on purpose. Like when I take a look at that interview back, I feel like it's Vince trying to convince us, the audience. That, hey, I'm not the bad guy in this scenario. Look at my black eye. You know, Brett was very selfish. It feels as if Vince is trying to position himself as the baby face. He was. And I don't even think he realized at the moment I'm becoming a heel with this promo. It feels like a happy accident. You know, this Mr. McMahon character blowing up. It doesn't feel like part of a grandiose plan. Might not have been, but we didn't know how good it was going to be. Right. You know, we didn't realize that Vince is going to become a major superstar is on the heel side of the roster. I remember my booking sheets, uh, where I had one sheet and it would have, uh, on one side, the baby faces, the other side, the heels to book you to use as a, a, in a booking scenario. And then a miscellaneous column, uh, with, uh, you know, Vince prominently on that list. So he went from being the, the just simply the, uh, chairman of the board to, uh, a new persona. It was a new character for me to play with. And we did it without Vince going to house shows to any degree whatsoever. Right. So it was, uh, it was a lot of surprises and some of them were good surprises. Like I said, when you can create and be involved in creating this, the top heel that you've ever had, you know, uh, it's hard to top that man. 